Hi friends, Erin from The Impatient Gardener. Today's video has absolutely nothing to do with this tree behind me, but I couldn't help but show it to you because everything's at, I guess, peak color. So a lot of the leaves are off the trees because it's been quite windy, but the trees that still have leaves are looking so pretty right now. Um, I love fall for this. I do not like fall for what comes after it, but this is Acer japonicum uh, aconitifolium. I'm very clumsy when I say that. Dancing Peacock, I think, is one of the common names for it. I thought it was beautiful yesterday. I came out today and it is just, it caught my eye from the living room. It is just glowing orange. It is so pretty and the color is actually really pretty everywhere. Um, a few of the things haven't fully colored up yet, um, but some of those things are kind of late. Anyway, it's looking really pretty, so I just thought we'd start here, and then we can walk over to the vegetable garden uh, where we're going to talk about storing lotuses. As a young girl, it feels worse. We played hide and seek for hours, raised our shadows among the pines. So Even this Catinus Golden Spirit, that's a gold smoke bush, has colored up into really pretty kind of mottled colors that play so well against the monkshood over here. And the climbing hydrangea is just starting to yellow up. It will turn bright golden yellow uh, in time, at least it usually does. This is a Rixa japonica, a plant I picked up randomly at Clem's Song Sparrow Nursery ages ago when Clem's was still in business. Um, but all of this plays against the backdrop that's behind it here. And this is all the beech trees over on the other side of the crook, kind of by the vegetable garden. But if you look up in the sky, it's just beautiful colors. And as we pan over here, there's some beautiful maples. And over here in the woods, we have some beautiful maples. Uh, the uh, birch tree there has already lost its leaves, but the maples are looking really beautiful. And right through that little uh, inlet right there, that's Lake Michigan over there. Okay, but now let's go over to go deal with the lotus. So I think this is as good of a time as any to update you on the boxwood situation. Uh, you probably recall that this spring I learned that I had boxwood blight. I had to remove five boxwoods that were limited to a very specific garden over on one side of the driveway. And, and that was the real bonus of this is that it was a very contained area. The problem with boxwood blight is that it's very once you have it on your property, it's very hard for it not to spread around. It doesn't go through the air, but it does stick to you and clothing and animals and all the things. So it, it, it's a tough one. I will link to those videos below so that you can um, find out more about it if you're interested in that. In any case, we are standing here in front of the vegetable garden and uh, you can see I've got all these boxwoods here. Um, I was particularly worried about these because many of these are Glencoe. Glencoe is the variety that had boxwood blight um, over in the other part of the garden and that is actually one of the varieties that is uh, more prone not highly prone but more prone than the other varieties that i grow on the property here so i was really watching these glencoes very carefully um, all of which by the way i bought as plugs ages ago and grew them on on in pots for years and years and years before they finally got planted out uh, I had a lot of time into those, and then to find out that they were prone to boxwood blight was a bit of a killer. Anyway, very happy to show you that these are all doing great. In fact, um, you can see that they have a lot of new growth on top. I pruned these in um, probably August, 
way later than I wanted to, but I sort of was waiting. I had some photo shoots happening and I was waiting for, to, so that I, they would be freshly pruned prior to those photo shoots uh, to do them. So that's when they actually got done. And so all this growth that you see on the top here is you know, since then. In terms of care, I haven't been doing too much differently. The main thing I've been doing is not going near that other garden. Fortunately, that garden is heavily planted with Hecala and Chloa, so there was not a lot of need to go in there over the year. I didn't try to replant anything. I don't think there's a need to replace those, so I'm not worried about it. I did treat all of my boxwoods this year with a product called Top Buxus. You've probably heard of it, and in fact, many of you recommended it to me. I have been using their granular fertilizer for a couple of years now. This year I bought the Restore and Protect, which is a spray-on thing. And I would use that quite faithfully this year. I have, there are a lot of people who swear that it helps protect slash restore from boxwood blight. I don't know. I don't know if that works or not. I'll just tell you that I've been using it and all my boxwoods so far are doing really good this year. So I'm really happy to report the boxwood situation is cautiously optimistic, fingers crossed. By the way, I will just say it was a year that was, our weather this year was just absolutely perfect for boxwood blight to spread, for any fungus to spread. It was humid and hot for days on end. And we had very dry weather too, in terms of lack of rain. So um, things were stressed from lack of rain and then it was also the perfect conditions for fungus to spread around and spores to be really happy. So I'm really happy with how things went this year and optimistic that we'll be okay going forward, but we'll see. So hopefully you saw how the lotus experiment worked. I grew a lotus here in the vegetable garden, stock tank pond, and then one on a small one on the porch in just a pot. Uh, and it was great, it was great. Uh, this one in particular was just a star this year, and I was so happy with it. Um, even without the flowers, I prefer growing the lotus to the water lilies because those leaves come up, and the leaves themselves are so gorgeous. I got some beautiful pods that I dried um, and brought inside. This one bloomed, I think I had five or six blooms on this one and maybe four on the other one. It took a while to get them going, but they were just worth every bit of effort. So many of you have asked, as if I, what do you do now that it's winter? So, so if you're coming to this video because you searched for how to store a lotus over winter, welcome, hi. I just wanna state for the record right now, I don't know what I'm doing. This is me bringing you all along for an experiment and let's, let's learn together and let's see what happens, right? Uh, welcome your comments, by the way, if you have suggestions about this process. My understanding is that there's a few different things you can do. If you're pond doesn't freeze they're really fairly hardy and you can sink the pot down to the bottom of the pond and just leave them there over winter that won't work for this because one i'm pretty sure it would freeze two we empty this every year um, part of the cleanup that i like to do in this garden is emptying out this tank um, and moving it out of the way so that we can get in here and really clean this up really well so um, i don't like to leave this full and i think i'm also afraid that the stock tank pond would you know, the seams would pop on it because I'm pretty sure it would freeze. So that's not an option. Option number two is to bring them in their pots into a cold but not freezing place uh, for the winter. I don't really see that being a viable option for me either. It, the only option for that is in my basement. I don't love the idea of standing water sitting in a pot over winter. It just doesn't, seems like, it seems like it's just a mess waiting to happen. So the third option is what I'm gonna do, which is dig out these tubers and store these, divide them and store them in the fridge is apparently how you do it. Anyway, let's get, let's get going on it. And uh, like I said, this is a learning process. We won't know until spring or maybe even later if this actually worked, but I thought I'd bring you along for it anyway. Ooh. What I was trying to say is that uh, the fish all found a home. I put them up on Facebook Marketplace and somebody came and collected as many of them as we could fish out of there and they all went to, well, they went to live out their life's purpose because I bought them 
from the feeder fish tank. They were meant to feed other fish and that's what they went to go have done with them. So it popped, I tried to cover up the holes on this pot, you might remember, and uh, one of them popped out of one of those holes. Okay, I think this is gonna get extraordinarily messy. And I think, probably I'm just gonna pull that off. Now we just have to wash this all off and try, ooh, try to figure out, oh my gosh, holy cow. I wasn't expecting tubers that big. Holy smokes. I think I probably should have cut off all of that top growth that I found before I started doing this. So I don't know, as we've clearly ascertained, I don't know a lot about what I'm doing here, except that um, I know that it's very important that you not damage the growing tips. And um, I'll show you what one of those is. This right here, this right here, these are growing tips. I don't know if that's a growing tip. I think that's a leaf, actually, that was going to come up. Cut that out, I think. Okay. So, um, the advice that, so what I read online said you should save tubers with at least two growing tips. And I don't know if that's a, sort of a method of making sure that you have one good growing tip, you know, a, an error and a spare there or what, but get bold, just do it, right? Um, I believe that lotus tubers are a bit of a delicacy. Um, I have never had them. I wouldn't know what to do with them. And these wouldn't be appropriate for that anyway because I did not grow these um, with organic fertilizer. The fertilizer I used was not organic, so I wouldn't eat these. If I've done this correctly, I believe I have up to five potential plants here. So this is probably the most promising guy because it's just a nice big, and these tubers feel good. They are very very firm and the growing tips look nice and healthy here's another one i think this could actually be two but i'm going to leave it as one uh, this could probably also be two but i don't have enough confidence to know that for a fact and then we've got these two so five separate plants here now apparently these go in a ziploc bag In the crisper drawer. Um, I'm not going to show you that because my fridge is an embarrassment um, and it's almost exclusively condiments. However, um, I also don't know that I have that much room in there, especially because you have to take, like, it's almost like that drawer can't be used for anything else because of these growing tips. So I'm going to do a little experiment here and I'm going to save some of these in the fridge and I'm going to pack some along with my dahlias and just see how that goes because I have more than I need here so I think I'm going to just experiment a little bit and see if packing them the same way that I pack my dahlia tubers would work. I don't know it works for a dahlia tuber don't you think it might work for this? We will see. Okay so like I said I have another pot of lotuses it's the ones that grew on the patio. I'm going to do the exact same thing with those and save those in the same manner if there's anything to save. But I am cautiously optimistic that this might actually work. And once again, this is like another video about all the experiments I did this year. The Lotus experiment, even if these fail, was amazing. I would absolutely grow it again. The only issue is, and this is the same thing when you save dahlias, I wish I knew right now whether this was going to work or not because I don't want to be without a Lotus next year and things could be sold out by the time I figure out whether this is gonna work or not. Um, so we'll have to stay tuned. Come back uh, in what, like spring, and we'll find out what happened with these. Hey, thank you for watching. If you did some experiments in your garden this year, tell me about them. 
all the experiments I had in my garden with possibly the kumquat, which is not doing super great, were great this year. Everything was so much fun to grow. I had enjoyed at least moderate success with them. And, uh, and it's just so much fun to try these new things. This was pretty cool. All right, hope you have a great day in your garden. Talk to you soon.